So we'll call the, uh, the <clears throat> April 21st uh, Diversion Authority Finance Committee together. Uh, the first order of business is a roll call. Mr. Don, would you do the Mayor Dardis. Here. Dr. Mahoney. Here. Mr. Peterson. I'm here. Mr. Henderson. Here. Mr. Jacobson. Here. Mr. Costin. Here on the phone. Ms. Johnson. Mr. Montplaisir. Here. Mr. Redlinger. Here. Mr. Steen. Here. Mr. Garrick. Ms. McCall. A quorum is present. Thank you, Don. Uh, the next order of business is to approve the minutes of the March 24 meeting. Steen moves to approve. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Is there a second, please? Sanderson, I'll second. second. Thank you. We have a second. It's been moved and second to approve the March 24 meetings as distributed. Any discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sorry, you can't see our hands up right now. I forgot you were on the phone. I just want to make a correction of the minutes. Please, M uh, Mayor Mahoney. I think we have to be a little careful on the minutes. Uh, I, I don't quite know, Don, maybe how we might phrase this, but it says the local people will remember that this situation was not handled well. I would rather have that phrase. Uh, I guess we would just be concerned about the concerns about the local community used as consultants. The not handled well, I, I would object to. So I, I and I know it was difficult for you to do that, but it might be a better phrase that we need to be uh, aware of use of local consultants rather than okay. not handled work. well. You don't mind. I will work with John on um, different verbiage on that. OK, thank you. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney, and thank you, Don, for working with Joel on that. We have a we have a motion on the table. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Excuse me, Don, would you please call the roll? My apologies. Mayor uh, Dardis. Mayor Dardis, we can yeah. actually use just a voice vote on this. All right. Um, Easier. Don, please call the call. Aye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mayor Dardis. You want a roll call? Yes, please. Mayor Dardis? Yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Hendrickson? Aye. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Costin? Yes. Mr. Montplaisir? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Next order of business is approve the order of the agenda. It's in your packet and has been distributed. Are there any additions? So moved. Mahoney. Thank you. Steen, second, second, please. Steen. Been moved and seconded. Yes. Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis? <clears throat> yes. Dr. Mahoney? Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Henderson? Aye. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Costin? Yes. Mr. Montplaisir? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. The next order of business is the approval of the bills. Mr. Costin, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. The total bills on the list for the month of April um, total $1,862,987.37. looks to be pretty typical bills. Uh, Cash Joint Water District, the largest uh, stakeholder reimbursement from Clay County in the city of Fargo. And uh, some other uh, miscellaneous bills so that'd be all thank you mr costin is there any questions for mr costin with regard to the bills mahoney moved to approve jacobson you, second thank you mr jacobson's been moved and second to approve the bills as presented by mr costin don would you please call the roll 
Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Carston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson is on the line. She apparently can't hear us. Mr. Montpleasure. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. The next order of business is item number five is the financial report. Again, Mr. Costin, please. Yeah, thanks again. Uh, page 30 of the financial packet, uh, cumulative spend for uh, 2021, $14,744,770, and a cumulative uh, project life to date total of 660752111 We move on to page 31. Our net position has increased uh, at $104,233,000. $972. Uh, the additional reports are listed in the standard format, and I don't have any further comment. Thank you, Mr. Costin. Are there any questions from the Finance Committee with regard to the financial report? Chairman, I did I did want to report. I did want to report on the status yes, of the audit. On the status of the yes, audit, our staff has been work, working through that. We do have draft financial statements ready, and uh, that field work is progressing. Um, so I would think we would have something uh, potentially in, the, in May. Thank you, Mr. Costin, for that information. Uh, any additional questions for Mr. Costin on the financial report? Do we have a motion, please, to accept? Steen moves. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Is there a second, please? Montpleasure seconds. Thank you, Mr. Montpleasure. I move and second to accept the re financial report as presented by Mr. Costin. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Don, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson? Yes. Mr. Hendrickson? Yes. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Carson? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Montpleasure? Yes. Mr. Redlinger? Yes. Mr. Steen? Yes. That is everyone. Thanks, Don. Our next order of business is the Executive Director's Financial Report. Mr. Paulson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, before I dig into the details, I just want to make a notification for the Finance Committee. Um, I did send out a uh, link to our new financial dashboard uh, to all the Finance Committee members and the board members. Um, that link is a link that can be used over and over again. So if the committee members would want to bookmark that or save that in their browser, um, they can access that at any time. Uh, it is updated once a month um, by the PMC as we process invoices. Um, it's a great resource and a great opportunity to uh, provide all the uh, information at the fingertips of the Finance Committee. Um, we won't preview it here in my report, uh, but it's the same data that's, uh, that is contained in my report. Uh, certainly uh, looking for comments from the Finance Committee as we move forward if there's any uh, um, uh, maybe uh, ease of use or any comments related to the dashboard. Uh, we can certainly make some changes if uh, if it makes sense. So feel free to reach out to me um, as you begin to use that and uh, and certainly let me know if there's any comments or concerns that anyone on the Finance Committee has with that. Uh, so Thank with that, Mr. Professor. Chair, um, I'll just kind of dig into the executive director's financial report. Um, you know, same same numbers as were expressed earlier in the finance committee meeting. Um, actual expenditures to date for the program is 660 million. Um, 
uh, to date in forecast year 2021, uh, we're at a total of 30.61 million as of 326 2021. As you can see on this page, uh, again, um, as usual, a lion's share of our expenses are contained under lands and impacted property mitigation. Um, that is the most active task at the moment. Um, and then the, the other active tasks are the P3 procurement and those costs are contained in the engineering, legal, financial and P3 support. Um, so digging into the level two detail, um, no, nothing much to, that has changed on this sheet. Uh, so we can maybe move on to the next. Um, and here you can see the expenditures in the lands and acquisition, lands acquisition and mitigation, um, obviously our, our largest um, area. Uh, appears to be on schedule, actually a little bit under. If you use the dashboard, we, uh, we do have kind of a speedometer on there that shows uh, where the anticipated expenditures to date uh, should be. Um, so we're actually running a little bit under budget in our lands acquisition and mitigation, as well as the other items. Uh, not necessarily a concern at the moment. Um, I think once we move through the procurement uh, status here over the course of the next few months and, uh, and move towards uh, full scale construction, uh, we'll obviously have a lot of activity in all of the um uh budget areas so um so that's about all i have for my financial report mr chair but certainly open to answer any questions related uh to uh, any of the items contained in the report finance committee do you have any questions of joel for the uh financial his financial report mr chair just have a question joel on your last slide let me say management legal financial procurement. Uh, you had 16, 000, 16 million listed for the uh, 2021. Uh, we've used 20 million to date. Uh, or should be at 1 million to date, 1 minus 1 to 6. Um, and I know there was some money that we we're going to save and use for the uh, settlement. Is that 16 million still solid or is that going to be a cost savings for us? um that's uh i'll ha i'll have to pull in uh paul to help answer that question um paul he's kind of got management legal and financial and procurement so i it could be legal in like different ways but i just as curious whether the new financial model paul reflected the fact that uh, with upstream settlement i think we all felt that our legal fees would drop i i, I got you mayor um it, yeah, so Paul, I'm not sure we haven't updated the 2021 budget since that time. Did this contemplate um, the settlement agreement? It it did, as you can see here uh, on this line is the actual settlement agreement, the 35 million. Um, but the underneath the lands, there is an increased cost. That 16 million is a estimate due to the eminent domain costs and as part of our uh revising the budget and relooking at the budget again um we looked at the potential for eminent domain um cases or number of parcels being uh utilized having to utilize the eminent domain process and so that number uh, does reflect the legal costs and, and the management costs for uh, an increase in eminent domain cases. Um, if we are able to settle uh, without eminent domain, then we would definitely see um, a decrease or a cost savings in this line item. So uh, maybe Rick Steen would know the answer to this since he's an accountant. Um, so the, there's been some shifts in our budget a little bit and is and then he always will ask and I'd ask the same in the end point does that change us a bit up or down in millions so some different things that have come in there does that change our financial model it's a great question mayor Mahoney um, and I believe Rick Steen did ask a similar question um, 
a, a few committee meetings ago related to the settlement agreement. Um, we did uh, put together um, numbers that were somewhat contemplated for MOUs with different political subdivisions um, that are no longer necessary in relation to the settlement agreement. Um, basically, that the 35 million um, was already somewhat budgeted into the program uh, for certain MOUs and in various items that uh, would have otherwise been necessary had the settlement agreement um, not been put into place. Uh, so uh, th I guess the the, the quick answer, uh, Mayor Mahoney, is no, there isn't uh, any budget increase and there isn't necessarily any budget savings. Um, we've just re-termed some of the um, line items in our budget to reflect where the dollars are actually being expended. Thank you. Any additional, Any additional questions on the financial report? All right. Mr. Chair, I can move into contracting actions if you wish. Please, yes, please move into contracting actions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this month we have three contracting actions for finance uh, consideration. Uh, the first one is a contract for uh, with Schmidt and Sons for work package 50E. Uh, this is a demolition um, work package uh, for structures in the right of way. Um, and that was bid out and the low bid was Schmidt and Sons for 98,000. Um, and, and Mr. Chair, I, I think maybe I'll do an explanation of each one of these and uh, um, then take questions and then uh, a vote if that um, sounds appropriate. Sounds great. Thank you, Joe. Okay, thank you. Uh, the second um, item for consideration is uh, in-town levy um, change order. Uh, basically, this is for the settlement agreement um, with the ICS case. Uh, this was uh, presented to the Diversion Authority Board last month in executive session with a uh, uh, negotiated terms. Um, it was accepted by ICS, and so um, the settlement agreement with uh, with the contractor is being run through. The contract is uh, change order number eleven, and uh, the amount due um, to to meet our settlement agreement will be the two hundred and eighty four thousand nine hundred ninety one dollars. Uh, and then the last task order is task order one, amendment eighteen for a budget increase to HMG. Uh, and this is related to their annual uh, professional liability insurance, um, which through their MSA, um, their negotiated MSA, uh, the Diversion Authority Board has agreed to uh, cover the cost of HMG's insurance premium uh, on an annual basis. So. Uh, that is the, the number that was submitted uh, for their insurance premium, $269,384. Um, certainly available for any questions related to each of these three. And uh, and if after questions, Mr. Chair, we could have a vote on those, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Are there any questions on items one, two, or three on the board approval contract actions? Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Mr. Steen, I would move to approve. All three? Mr. All three Steen? contract actions, yes. Uh, we have a motion to approve all three uh, contract actions as presented by Mr. Paulson. Is there a second, please? Jacobson, second. 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 Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Uh, then moved and second to approve uh, the contract actions as presented by Mr. Paulson. John, would you please call the roll? Mayor Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. 
Yes. Mr. My Pleasure. Yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Don. All right, Mr. Chair, the next items are uh, for the Finance Committee's uh, information. These are Executive Director approved contracting actions. I'll go through the list and uh, take any questions related to any of these. Uh, the first one was for um, potholing for Excel for a gas line and the upstream mitigation area. Um, the second um, contracting action was Task Order 6, Amendment 15. Uh, really just closing out a, a land management task order and uh, had a savings of $38,600. Uh, the next item uh, also was a closeout of a task order uh, for a budget savings of 20, uh, $20,000. Um, the third task order with HMG uh, was really just a, a time um, extension, uh, zero cost budget amendment. Um, the next task order was uh, the removal of the public outreach program from the AE2S contract. Um, so that was the, a net savings of 2.2 uh, million. Uh, the next one was a new services agreement uh, for consulting services for 1892. That work was done already completed under an advanced work directive. Um, and so this agreement is really just to uh, to pay the invoice due um, to uh, to 1892. Uh, the next item is a contract amendment for executive management services uh, for 132,000. And if we move to the next page, uh, and then the last executive director contracting action. Uh, was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that's for Cass County Joint. So that's all the Diversion Authority had uh, for this month. Can certainly take any questions uh, related to any of those. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Questions for the Finance Committee? Yeah, Chairman, this is Kent Cost, and I had a question on the Executive Management Systems uh, Task Order Amendment. I just wondered if Joel could explain that a little bit. When I read it, 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 it talks about recruitment consulting service, and it also talks about leadership development. And I'm not sure I understand what 4D leadership development means, or nor who the audience is that would receive that development. I'm assuming that's training. Joel, could you explain that a little bit? Because the fee seems really high. Uh, that's correct, uh, Mr. Costin. Uh, so we have uh, been using executive management systems uh, for hiring, um, leadership development, and um, coaching for our executive staff, um, as well as um, the potential for um, board work uh, between uh, for our diversion authority board. Um, and so this is this is an amendment to add um, to each of those tasks related to executive management systems. Um, and so in those three areas, um, as far as hiring, uh, development and coaching, and then board work uh, would be contained within this task order. Joel, could you explain the future part of that though? There seems to be a point we're, we're uh, approving today, but there also seems to be a commitment for years beyond us as well. I thought I saw a commitment for 21 through 23 as well. That That's correct, Mayor Mahoney. So this would be a task order for the next two years for what would be anticipated. Um, obviously, time and materials here. And, and so, you know, as we kind of scope out the work that we're going to be doing um, with the board and the services that executive management and uh, the diversion authority staff along with the board will be undertaking um, that would be contained within this task order. Uh, we also have contemplated a, a number of potential new hires. Um, you know, we have we have the authority from the board um, to really have two additional hires for this year. Um, you know, we will be moving forward with those uh, and using executive management services um, to assist in the hiring process. And then um, as we move into next year and assess our 
internal uh, labor needs uh, for the diversion authority. Um, you, you know, we will also be adding that to uh, through this amendment um, if additional um, employees are necessary or identified. Um, and of course, as the finance committee is aware, um, you know, the board would need to approve any structural increase in numbers of employees for the diversion authority. Um, and so that would be a discussion that we would be having towards the end of this year, moving into 2022, uh, once we've kicked off construction and uh, we have a better grasp of the relationship with the P3 and, uh, and uh, have more clarity on the tasks that would be appropriate for the diversion authority to undertake internally. So just for the board members to understand, this is a gentleman you hired for 26.5 back uh, or early on, I thought it was more for yourself. I see a little mission creep when this last year he's cost us 144,000 and I don't remember us discussing that, but we must have approved it at one time. And now we're doing an additional mission creep of 132,000, but yet I thought you've already defined your finance manager and your uh, person that's going to be compliance. So what other positions is he going to help us figure out for 132,000? Well, the, the 132,000 is really for three different areas. Uh, one, hiring of a potential project manager to work under our engineering director um, to assist in um, going through the process of hiring uh, a CFO, uh, chief financial officer. Um, and then the other areas would be the work with the board uh, as well as the work with the executive staff through coaching and leadership development. Just a question for Shelley. When this gentleman has helped out with the city of Moorhead, are you having bills this high that you're paying out for leadership development in the Council of Moorhead? Um, Mayor Mahoney, I would I don't have that information at my fingertips right now, um, so I would not be able to respond to that at this time, but I certainly can get back to you. Well, I was just under the impression the county was doing some type of professional group that's going to help us in the salary structure. I thought that was one thing, but it's hard for me to a leadership role and, and Mel's very good. I'm not debating that, Joel, but the problem we have is in public spaces. You're basically paying for a consultant almost $276,000 to help in leadership. And uh, sometimes in a public venue, that's a little difficult to sell to the community. So. Uh, well, um, Mayor Mahoney, we certainly can um, suspend this task order and, um, you know, uh, have a, a more thorough review of uh, necessary um, uh, scope related to it. Um, and uh, if, if there's some uh, discomfort with the finance board on on the uh, the services being provided to the DA staff. I think the hard time, Joel, is we sometimes don't know what he's doing, so I didn't realize we spent 144000 on him, and I know he's valuable to you, but sometimes the board doesn't see the product of the work he does, so I think that's sometimes what gives us a moment to pause. Can't I think that's what your concern was or no? Well, yeah, I just I didn't understand the scope of work, and I and I do understand based upon the explanation it's multifaceted, but um, I would wonder how the, the financial budget is derived. Is it intuitively it just seems really high to me? Well, okay. Uh, well, we will um, take another look at that. Um, is there any uh, proposed budget that seems more palatable for uh, the scope that's been presented? Before you go there, I think Chad Peterson has his hand up. I know the I know chair cannot see that. Mr. Oh, thank Peterson, you, Mr. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Yes, sir. Yeah, I I have no problem uh, taking a pause in this, Joel, to get a better explanation for the team, uh, and I think that. I guess the main question I have, Joel, if we do pause this for what could very well be a month, is that critical? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, are you, do you know, are you follow my question? Yeah, so, so we do, we are using um, 
Mel on a fairly regular basis on a number of different fronts. Um, and uh, this would fund the work that he's doing currently, so it would suspend that until we can get a better handle on uh, what would be more appropriate for um, the Finance Committee to uh, consider. Mr. Chair, follow up, if I may. Yes, please. Mr. Uh, Chair, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a thought here, Joel. I mean, I don't want to interrupt what you're doing. But for, instead of perhaps approving this for you know another two years, uh, continue what you're doing. Bring back some additional information next meeting. And so, if in order before we approve an extension of a two-year extension on this, and then the the finance committee can better weigh in on what's happening here. And that's just a thought. Thank you, Mr. Steen. Uh, for the finance committee's information. Uh, Mr. Paulson and I vetted this earlier today on a, on a phone call, uh, and the same questions were addressed that all of you are, have a concern for. And uh, but just so you know that uh, there has been uh, a lengthy discussion about the scope of work. So uh, I uh, we have a suggestion that we remove uh, the executive management item number seven from uh, the. Uh, executive directors uh, approve contracts uh, and uh, just approve the first six. We, it's, this is a non-actionable item. This is in Mr. Paulson's purview, but uh, Joel, I'll leave that up to you as to how you execute it. Yeah, so those, thank you, Mr. Chair. So these are, have already been executed. Um, so we'll have to figure out a way to uh, deal with that, but we will deal with that in, internally um, and perhaps provide a report back to the board, uh, I mean, to the Finance Committee um, in the next few months, so. All right, thank you. Uh, move on, please, to the Cass, or to uh, Cass County Joint Water Resource Districts. Uh, one item to report out here, um, uh, Task Order 1, Amendment 4, Property Appraisal Services for Compass, um, an increase in budget of $70,600. And uh, the next item would be the MCCJPA approved contracting actions, two items for Crown Appraisal, uh, $11,500 and $13,500 uh, for Property Appraisal Services. And, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Um, just wanna make a note, uh, there were a number of uh, additional items added to the Finance Committee today. Uh, we'll have John Shockley um, present those items. They're mainly agreements um, and MOUs. So, Any additional questions on the Cass County or the um, Minnesota Clay County? Uh, contract actions, are there any discussion on those? Any questions of Joel? All right, we'll move on to item number eight. This is uh, approval of MOUs and agreement actions, and this is Mr. Shockley's. Is Mr. Shockley on? Yeah, I'm sorry, I was on, I had my microphone on mute and I was talking to myself, so. Um. <laughs> Uh, it's been, Mr. Chair, it's been a, a another busy month of MOUs. Uh, we are uh, making very good progress in getting all of the MOUs signed. And just a brief refresher, these are the what we call third-party agreements, and these are agreements with different entities to undertake uh, various parts of the project. Um, and that's uh, and so they're critical. They're critical path items to the project, and so getting them completed uh, is is very good. Uh, overall, there's probably about 70 of these smaller third-party MOUs, and so every month you've been seeing a lot of these. And so I'm just going to run through an overview of each each of the agreements. They're in your packet. I can give you a, a, a more specific review if you'd like. Um, but with respect to the uh, Cass County MOU, uh, that is an MOU between Cass County uh, and the uh, 
uh, diversion authority whereby Cass County is going to take over the vacation process for roads as they are uh, being dead ended because of the diversion authority uh, construction of the diversion channel. And so it provides for maintenance and permanent closures of those roadways. Uh, and it's uh, one of those housekeeping items uh, that we need to do as part of the project because the project uh, does cross over several county roads and township roads. Uh, that need to be vacated and maintenance of those roads over time is important. Uh, we then have an MOU with XL Energy and that is another uh, important uh, MOU that is for the uh, rerouting of a pipeline underneath the diversion channel. Uh, we've worked very hard on that project or that MOU to get that completed. Um, it's the coordination of placing the pipe uh, and that's uh, just in general that is slightly to the west of West Fargo. Uh, it is the pipe currently runs uh, diagonal and it is being rerouted to cross underneath the channel uh, in a uh, east west fashion. Um, the next is a uh, MOU with uh, New Star. And once again, that is through the diversion channel. Uh, that is another pipeline uh, that is being rerouted. Uh, and as part of both of those pipelines, they have to bore them under the channel and use grouting and other materials to make sure that water doesn't penetrate uh, from one side of the channel and flow into the protected area. Uh, the next uh, set of agreements is with Cast Rule Water. Uh, those are for some service line abandonments. Uh, there are some housing, uh, houses and buildings being removed along the diversion channel uh, right of way to make way for construction of the diversion channel. And so those pipelines have to be capped and removed. Uh, and so that's about an $18,000 cost. And then we did have a late add uh, uh, and an agreement between Castro <laughs> Water and the diversion authority. Uh, as part of the construction of the Southern Embankment by the Corps of Engineers, several utilities have to be relocated. One of those utilities uh, is Castro Water, and so they have several uh, pipes that need to be relocated for ongoing construction, including construction around the Diversion Inlet, Drain 27, uh, SEA2, and the Red River Control Structure. And so all told, those are about $618,000 of relocations. Uh, the reason that we push this through th so quickly is that apparently there is a gathering shortage of pipe in the uh, industry. And so in order to secure a better price on the pipe, we needed to get uh, it approved by the board at this meeting. Otherwise, the potential increases in the pipe could be significant. Um, I, I've heard uh, some increases of the pipe have been 180% or more, and so we're trying to avoid that, and that's why we rushed through getting this contract on the agenda. Uh, I can answer any of the questions that you might have about the agreements, um, but that's just a general overview. It's uh, been another busy month. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Questions for Mr. Shockley on these five items? All right, thank you. Moving on, the P3 schedule update, Mr. Shockley. Um, I, I don't know, Mr. Oh, Chair, did me. you need to make a recommendation on those agreements? Yeah. Yes, excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shockley. Mayor uh, Mahoney moved to, approve, moved to approve the MOUs we talked about today that uh, John Shockley just presented. 16 seconds. Move, uh, thank you. I motion and second to approve the five Agreement actions and MOUs that uh, Mr. Shockley presented this afternoon. Don, would you please call the roll? Dear Dardis. Yes. Dr. Mahoney. Aye. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Hendrickson. Yes. Mr. Jacobson. Yes. Mr. Costin. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Montpleasure. Yes. yes. Mr. Redlinger. Yes. Mr. Steen. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you, Don. Moving on to the P3 schedule update, Mr. Shockley. 
thank you, Mr. Chair. So first I'm going to just give a very, very quick update on uh, WIFIA, then I will jump in on the schedule update. Um, I do know that uh, I've had some questions from board members about the interest rate volatility in the bond markets right now, uh, depending upon the week in which different obligations are sold, there's been fluctuations within the treasury rate. Uh, in uh, discussing the, the concern and issue with WIFIA, um, we have agreed that we will insert a provision within the WIFIA agreement whereby at the time we make our first draw, um, so we're intending to close on the WIFIA loan on June 29th, 29th. Uh, if we, uh, we're not intending to draw upon it until about 2023. So if during that time the interest rate drops on the treasuries, uh, they will allow us to recalibrate that lower interest rate, but it can't ever go higher than what we lock in at uh, the date of closing. So it, it's an advantageous clause for the diversion authority. Um, with respect to the P3 schedule, uh, the Diversion Authority did receive the technical proposals uh, in March, and we are intent, uh, expecting to receive the financial proposals from the team, P3 teams on Friday. Um, going into May, uh, we're going to be asking for a special board meeting on May 13th to approve the Master Indenture of Trust and also to uh, uh, authorize Cass County Joint Water Resource District to issue its temporary funding improvement bonds. Um, and then we are going to be asking the board uh, to kind of keep your schedule somewhat open uh, the last week in May, uh, as we may need to have a meeting scheduled for the selection of the preferred P3 proposer. Um, we should have a better idea of what that schedule would look like in the next couple of weeks, and we'll um, try to get that out to the board as soon as possible. But we just wanted to make sure that um, everybody was kind of keeping their schedule a little bit more open the last week in May. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Is there any questions of John? All right, moving on. Uh, property acquisition status report, Mr. Dodds. Good afternoon, Mayor, committee members. In your packet is the usual monthly acquisition status report. Uh, I think you have all the information, mostly familiar to uh, many of you. Um, Paul, if you can just go to the next page quick, I'll point out a few items. Thank you, so on this page here, um, Overall status map showing the status of where we are with acquisitions for the project. Uh, all the channel lands have been acquired. You see it. Most of them highlighted in green. There are a few highlighted in red where we have an eminent domain action ongoing. In the last month, we've had a, a small handful of parcels that have been acquired. Some of those were in an eminent domain action that has now been settled just through a voluntary settlement. And so the number of parcels um, showing up in red has been decreased. The number of green uh, acquired parcels has increased. You'll also note that we have a handful, seven parcels in uh, where, where we have a purchase agreement signed and we're just waiting to get the closing date scheduled and, and uh, fully acquire those. Otherwise, the map also shows a, a variety of parcels in an orange color in the upstream area. Those are parcels where we are doing appraisal work, either for a flow easement or for a buyout of a structure site. And then uh, the bulk of our activity continues to be related to acquisitions for the Drain 27 wetland project and the Red River control structure along, along with a, a scattering of parcels in the upstream area. Um, the last thing I would just mention is on the next page, there's a map showing all of the parcels where we are working to secure environmental monitoring easements for the CORE's adaptive management program. Uh, that work is ongoing and we're continuing to try to buy um, those easements to support that, that uh, biotic and geomorphic monitoring. 
the subsequent pages of the report drill into more detail about each specific area. Um, happy to answer any questions on that if you have any. Otherwise, I think the data is there if, if uh, you have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Dodds. Any questions for Mr. Dodds? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Uh, Peterson. Uh, this, this is Chad. Thanks. Mr. Dodds, if I understand you correctly, if I heard you correctly, just verifying. So right now we're showing 82 uh, that are in eminent domain. That number is less now. And if so, how much less? Or did I miss um, you? Yeah. So there's been a, a number of parcels where we have continued to negotiate uh, with the property owners or through their council and uh, reached a settlement agreement. I believe last month that that number was closer to upper 80s. I think it was 88, if I remember correctly. And, um, you know, not to count my chickens before they hatch, but we've got a number of other properties, property owners that are a similar situation where we are expecting those eminent domain actions to be resolved through a settlement arrangement. Um, and so I'm, I'm optimistic that that number will continue to come down in the coming months. Okay, so eight, as of today, 82 is still accurate. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Additional questions for Mr. Dodds. Mr. Dodds, would you also mention about your excess lands map uh, uh, that you discussed with the lands committee today? The lands committee has done some amazing work and, and, and your group has too, uh, that shows some of the configurations and the acreages that are excess lands. And I thought it'd be interesting for the finance committee because obviously those are, you know, we're hoping to convert that back to dollars. So yeah, just sure. Briefly talk about that. Yeah, you bet. So, um, Paul, if maybe you scroll down just a couple pages, um, I forget which page it's on, but keep going down right there. That's a good spot to stop. So just as an example, uh, one more page, sorry. Just as an example here on this area, you can see on the little budget thermometer on the right side, we're suggesting we have about $6.4 million of asset properties. Um, and so from a finance committee's perspective, you understand we're in the, that's just in this category of, of parcels. Um, anyway, so because the policy on excess lands was reviewed and approved over the last uh, couple months, we did put together a map book showing the potential excess lands uh, and that we have in our current inventory. Uh, that map book is available in the land committee packet if anybody wants to find that it should be out on the website um, anyway that map book shows you know quite an inventory of land parcels all along the Georgia channel uh, various shapes and sizes and, and you know other configurations uh, also shows those current inventory of potential excess lands in the upstream mitigation area and a few potential excess lands along the diversion channel or the uh, southern embankment. Um, so we thought that it was you know, maybe a, a good celebration of having that policy in place. At some point, we will work through the policy to identify those potential lands as actual excess lands and follow the follow the procedures to um, you know, consider what to do with them. But um, Quite an inventory. I think collectively we're probably in the 20 plus million dollar range of end values. I haven't done that math recently, but I'm it, pretty confident it's over 20 million. So uh, anyway, hopefully that covers what you're hoping for, Mayor Curtis. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Dodds. Matt. Any additional questions for Mr. Dodds? Mayor Dardis? Please, Commissioner yeah, Peterson. Just one, uh, as long as we're all here together as a group, I want to share one trivial uh, anecdotal uh, story I met with Mayor Nyhoff just prior to the meeting with Senator Hoven and uh, Senator Klobuchar and Governor Burgum and he informed me and some of you may know this but uh, he informed me the last Oxbow lot sold and the sale value was two hundred thousand dollars wow <laughs> that's a good way to end the meeting huh? Chad, did he tell us how much he gave us back for that? The Diversion Authority got a check from him as well. 
Yeah, that I'm not aware of. But another piece of trivia, apparently someone wanted to buy one. Uh, the, the intent, obviously, just backing up the train, we all realized that most of those lots were intended to be uh, utilized to, to help off, help the impacted people, to give them a space to go to, give them a piece of land to build a new house on. Uh, and one of the impacted residents tried to flip the lot, but luckily uh, <laughs> the the mayor and team, and it may have been Mr. Dodds as far as I know too, but some team members uh, convinced them not to do it. So it's there's a lot of money going on down there. So Mayor Mahoney, don't, I don't know the specific answer, but uh, yeah, it's good times in Oxbow. We redid our MOU, and so this our money come back to the Diversion Authority with the re renegotiation. So everybody came out much better than we originally thought. You're very right, Chad. That ends today's business. Is there anybody from the Finance Committee that has something for the good of the order or something they'd like to discuss? Our next meeting will be May 26th. Anyone? I'd entertain a motion for adjournment, please. Peterson, motion. Jacobson, I second. Motion, I have a second. We stand adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>